Hey, this is another uh, dark table workflow video. Um, kind of workflow, kind of editing. I'm just going to, I've got to edit up this set for a client uh, and I'm going to let you watch along because it's just a pretty good set. There's no accidental or intentional nudity, so it's good for YouTube. Um, and also her skin is great, so it's, it's not like I'm, <laughs> sometimes I would not show like to show you uh, the harsh lights from a studio before retouching, just in, with for respect to the model or the client. But Hannah's, this is Hannah, Hannah Darrow from Denver. Her skin is great. Um, so we're gonna use this as an example. So since the last workflow videos I've done, I don't even know if I talked about how I dealt with clients. Now how I deal with clients is I'll do a shoot. I will choose some of my favorites, deliver them fully retouched, so I'll go from Darktable through to GIMP, possibly through Portrait Pro uh, for skin retouching and eye brightening. Some of the stuff that's super fast there. Check out my videos if you've never used Portrait Pro, especially if you're a Ubuntu user, because it absolutely works. Uh, it's a paid program, but it absolutely works under Wine and it can save you a whole lot of time. So um, yeah, I, I deliver my favorites so I'm gonna work up some favorites now, uh, and then I deliver proofs and let the client choose however many we've agreed up front for the package. Um, how I work in the studio is generally, there's usually a moment, there's, there are various moments where um, in a studio shoot, there's various moments that are pivotal. Uh, and for me, I shoot tethered, so what I'm trying to do is take shots as quickly as possible where I spin the the monitor around, show the model, show the client, and they go, whoa, that's awesome, this is going in the right direction. And that's the moment at which things start to get better. Uh, and there's more relaxation, and we've got a connection, and then there are various increasing moments during a session where that just goes to the next level, to the next level. So typically now, uh, what I do is I do a headshot up front, um, and I, in terms of lighting, um, have a look at my have a look at my video about my home studio and how I hang panels from the walls. In this case, what I've got is I've got a single, um, single strobe camera left, and I've got a white four by eight foot panel hanging camera right, and there's a white reflector sitting on Hannah's lap. Uh, and that's giving us a nice even lighting. So that was shot number, I don't know, of the session. That was that was me making sure that my tethering was working. That was me dialing in, you can just see the difference between black, and that was me dialing in the light above Hannah's head that's hitting the backdrop just to get that kind of glow. That was shot one, which was overexposed. That was shot two, which is good, and that was shot three. So at that point, I turned the camera around, showed this to Hannah, and we were like, boom, we're on the same page. This is going well. Uh, so that's how I like to shoot. Sorry, taking a drink of coffee. Um, so in terms of editing, uh, I, loved, I love this salmon dress, and it's going to go in the same kind of direction if I move that. That was a shoot, that's my previous shoot from a few days ago. Um, love that shoot. Um, and going this kind of lowering the saturation, popping the hair, but I learned a lot about actually, I don't, I've changed how I use tone curves now thanks to this shoot where I'm just like this glorious golden feel. So, let's see what we're doing here. I've already worked up some favorites. Um, this shoot was, there were many parts of this shoot, which ended with, uh, if any of you are older and rockers, do you remember Vixen? I believe in the end. Uh, at Broken Heart or something, was their big hit. They were an 80s metal band. The guitar player of that band sadly died about two years ago. Um, near where I live and her guitars ended up for sale locally and this is a guitar which she is well known to have played. So this guitar has been on um, YouTube, this guitar has been on tour, it's like battle scar scarred and awesome. So I used this guitar in this shoot because from an Instagram juice perspective 
uh, pretty cool that we can tag Vixen and other things to get some link juice. So click juice. So these are some of the these are some of the shots that I so far have liked near the end of the shoot. Um, that's awesome. So I had a smoke machine going. That was that was me holding a flash an a, a Godox AD two hundred on a stick and moving around and firing the camera remotely. Um, just playing around with light, as was that. That was me, st the stick standing behind. So the, some of these images I've worked up already. Um, just I was playing around. I couldn't not play with these images. They're awesome because these pants. This all started when I saw Hannah wearing these pants on on her Facebook feed and said, "We have to shoot these pants. These are awesome." Uh, that's my favorite so far of the shoot. Um, love that. As you can see, it's a it's a Godox. I shoot with an AD six hundred in the studio, um, and that's on a thirty two inch ish softbox double diffused. I think it's by Godox. It's a Godox thing too. And then I've got a I've got a white panel reflecting here. Uh, no lighting from the right, and I have a uh, light overhead shooting the black backdrop just to warm it up, just to give the separation. I very, very, very rarely use hair lights. I prefer to create a glow on a black background to create separation. I think in this case, in this edit, let's see, if I remember correctly, I added a second exposure module to bump the exposure in the lower half just to bring those pants out a little bit because it was a little bit a little bit dim. Um, if I hadn't been going for this reflection in the glasses, I would have used uh, like the long, what are they called? Long soft boxes, so like 14 inches wide, five foot high. I would have used that to more evenly light top to bottom, but yeah, with this just, just feel like this worked. We were going for a straight, just a straight line here with the guitar in a straight line here. Love it. Good work, Hannah. Um, so I like that one. I love that one. And those smoky ones are pretty cool. So let's go back and this is kind of how I'm working, how I work. So the thing is, before I give these as proofs, I want them to all look good. Um, I'm not going to give somebody just crappy out of camera proofs with a base curve. Um, I don't even use base curves. So I'm going to be rippling through these and, a, and, and working on some. Um, flash around out of battery there. You can see they're dull. Um, and then taking some of the ones that I'm working on, maybe as my favorites, and pushing them through those settings through to the rest. So I hope that makes sense. You know what you should do down in the bottom right hand corner of YouTube is you can change the speed of a video. So there's like speed this up. Um, you can watch this faster than I can think and talk it. So speed it up to 1.25 or 1.5. Um, because the feedback I get from this kind of video is that it's useful. So I'm doing it, but at the same time, I'm working here, so this is going to take a while. Um, if you like my work, um, the best place to see my work is on Instagram. I am kieferhoneyfordphotography.com, uh, and that's where I, this is just pretty much all my modeling stuff. That was a fun shoot. Um, so this is all all modeling stuff. Um, KieferHoneyFordPhotography.com is my portfolio, and on Facebook I am Kiefer Honeyford Photography also. So um, if you like and follow this video, that's appreciated. Comment, let me know what else you want because it really helps me to do more videos. Okay, onward and upward. I don't know how many minutes that's been, but probably too many. So I'm gonna take that first image which out of camera looks really good. Now, I don't really understand in Darktable what it is applying for this preview. Sometimes it looks really awesome. And now when I go into Darktable, of course, it's I'm losing that awesome. 
because it's going straight to pure raw. Um, in my studio, I shoot a lot of f8 250th with my Godox lighting, and I shoot a lot of like I just will turn on a dime, not have to change any lighting, and go f1.8 and put the shutter speed up to a thousandth. So I'm using high speed high speed sync, and I'll do that quite a lot because I don't have to retool, but I get a different look. So I have dialed in kind of white balances as a style for both of those, and you see that pretty much did a good job of the white balance. So my goal here is not necessarily to choose this photo as my, as what I want to go with. My goal here really is to start preparing these to be proofs and then at some uh, I'll go through them all and discard and choose favorites too so I am going to see the highlights um, so in terms of expo exposure there's a misconception that that is moody that is not moody that is underexposed if you want moody light for moody but every single photo that, that should have a touch of red in it. So if you want moody, you've got a side light and create a, an edge here and create, the, create an underexposed part of a face. But in my opinion, a photo that does not have the highs and the darks and a full spectrum is underexposed. Um, but that was really pretty damn good out of camera. But I am going to... I've been doing too much tone curve stuff. I've been... Historically, what I, what I might have done is I'd take that spot, which is often here before exposure compensation, and I'll push that all the way up until I get this. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm actually doing... Oops. That's weird. Although, Miss Freckles... There could be some cool contrasty stuff that I could do with a shot of Hannah's because she likes her freckles and I love her freckles. Um, but anyway, so I'm actually I'm I'm doing much more subtle S curves on these uh, quarter points based on what I learned from that image. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch, yeah, the goal. I don't know if I've I've done two takes of this video, and I don't know. Have I already talked about that image? That image is wicked awesome. Um, so that taught me a lot about lower contrast, uh, lower lower saturation, kind of more subtle tone curve. So I'm going to do that with the tone curve and then I'm going to bring the exposure down. It looks like the exposure was bang on actually straight out of the camera. Maybe even going to bring it down a tiny bit more just so I'm just getting a hint of a hint on that red. Uh, I'm going to drop I'm going to drop the local contrast which is clarity because it's a little bit more flattering, but only a tiny bit here. I'm going to up the contrast. Just until, I mean, this is so subtle. I'm, I'm moving until I just see a pop. I'm going to drop the saturation, believe it or not, because I like that look. Yeah, I like, I like that. I like that there's that, that there's nothing crazy popping here in terms of colors. I might come back afterwards in something else and pop the eyes more color wise. Uh, and I'm gonna do oh, tiniest, tiniest pop there, tiniest drop there, and tiniest lift there, which just gives me. A little bit more of a flattering and fashion style highlighting. I might drop the shadows. T 
tiny, tiny bit. What's highlights doing? Nothing really, but I can use that actually to pull that down instead of using a parametric parametric mask. So that is looking that is looking good. Is Vibrance gonna do anything? Vibrance confuses me. Sometimes it's really awesome and sometimes it makes no difference whatsoever, but I'm gonna use it because I feel like this needs a pop of something. Um I feel it needs a little bit more sharpening and I feel that if I went into the reds a little bit in the shadows just so that you can barely notice it's gonna really work with the skin tones and the dress color yeah like that second guessing the local contrast now I think it needs that it's a little bit of sharp well maybe I have taken the sharpness out with that let's try this again a little bit yeah that dropping that was killing my sharpness just a touch so this is like super subtle as you can tell um, but I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to copy that. Take all of the images. It might even be right for these white ones, but... Mm, not sure. Definitely right for all these. So paste all those settings all of those images and I have a set that definitely I mean in terms of proofs it's pretty darn good uh, yeah this is a bit slow because the screen recorder is taking up a lot of memory this is the this is a dark table development branch that I'm using because it has the CPU um, Acceleration, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out Shane Milton Photography on YouTube because um, he did a video on this. He's he's open source guy, also a photographer, but goes much more into the depths of, uh, much more into the depths than I do. And Harry Dur, is it Harry Durgan? Who is it? Uh, if you search Harry, I think it's Durgan Darktable. He goes into dark table like makes my head spin and makes me throw up in my mouth so if you're really into dark table um he takes it to a whole new level so let's see let's paste them on let's paste those same settings on here and see what we get meh okay so i'm gonna do this too so let's completely clear that let's take one that i actually like the look of uh let's take that one so white background looks like i t totally underexposed the background and i don't know if that changes anywhere but uh we're going to do this one differently i'm going to push the highlights way up And I even boost the shadows way up. This is all about boost. My tone curve, I'm going to boost the top, but not pull down the bottom because um, I'm not into the contrasty idea here. Look, contrast, I'm going to drop for sure. My equalizer, I'm going to push up again. Um, what's my contrast doing? 
I still have to fix this light or be okay with the overexposed. And in a high key shot, I'm much more okay with having overexposed parts like this forehead because it's kind of what it's kind of the way it rolls. Um, I think I think light on the contrast about there. What does Vibrance do? Vibrance just is kind of a little bit, it's giving me skin darkening. Oh, I also have to, what are we at? F8. F8. That's coldened it. Coldened it. Um, I'm going to, I want that background a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take the color zones. I'm going to go to brightness. I'm going to take the brightness of the brightest. That's not really doing anything. It's not doing anything in isolation, I should say. That might have been a gray background or it might have been a misfire I'm trying to work out if I changed how much white do I do I tend to not do as much white I'm kind of a dark background kind of person um, but I'm not going to go too over the top here because I'm really working for proofs I'm, and I'm coming I'm doing another pass through and I might make one of these one of my favorite images in which case I'll deal with I'll deal with the the slightly gray background but in general when I'm shooting white the worst thing you can do is overblow out the background and you get this kind of burned edge and hair so look every single hair here is visible which absolutely gives me the possibility to like say I take another exposure instance and I blow that background up to white then I create a mask. This could be tricky. Um, yeah, I, this should be done with a parametric mask, not a drawn mask. Let's say I did that and I invert the mask. I can fairly quickly get to a place where Let's see, let's do that even more. I mean, I could get away with this fairly quickly and create a drawn mask to make sure that that is not affecting the face, but it should really be a power. It should, t it'll take more time. No matter what I do, it'll take more time. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm going to leave it as that. I'm going back to my Lightroom. I'm going to copy all those settings. And notice I'm not cropping anything here um, because sometimes I forget not to paste that. So that's a nice image actually. That's nice. Paste all those settings. And I'll tell you what, I bet I, I, bet I changed the flash during the course of this. Actually, that's nice. It's a bit soft. Anywho, so those are definitely ready for proof. Now we're going back to a dark scene. So let's copy all of those settings. Let's see what that's like here. This looks a little bit underexposed. Then again, I've got to be careful and not use the first of a set because I'm frequently dialing in like uh, the test, test, test. This looks like I'm actually shooting. Let's see what this looks like with all of those settings. Oof. Too, way too dark, but yeah, wow, I underexposed this. Uh, oh. I did underexpose this in the studio, but it's raw. There's enough data here. 
So I've copied from before. I have the tone curve. I have the background correction. I have the color and the same color and such contrast, brightness, and saturation. Um, so I'm just playing with exposure here. Now that's interesting. There's some module that seems to bork the 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 blue showing up and I don't know which one it is but I find this once in a while so I'm just gonna do this by eye I think about there is perfect uh, and this is an icon d800 so I mean 36 megapixels that would let's play with some crops here because it's a nice image um, I typically leave space around somebody, so that would be a typical crop for me. I like that a lot. That's nice. And I've got that intentionally. Maybe tame it a little bit. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm going to clear the crop. And then I'm going to take that settings. Uh, let me go to there, and I'm going to call those done. Now from the coloring here of this next set, I know this is f1.8. Um, there's a fair, there's a fair difference between the Godox flashes at various powers, but it's consistent. So let's choose a nice one of these. I think one of these is definitely going to be my favorite. It's one of my favorites. So I'm going to put a little bit more effort into the edit. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. So let's edit that. I'm going to apply my style that is the white balance that I know is good for these lights at f1.8 with this lens and this setup. Uh, it's looking good already. Uh, what's going on here? Where's my, whoa, crazy how far that went. Visually, I thought it was way hotter already. Uh, What does that look like? Yeah, and then I'm going to do my super subtle tone curve, which I actually do so much now. Uh, I might just, I need to make a preset of it. Actually, I don't like, I don't want to S curve that. I want to just boost that. Maybe I'll bring the shadows down here. Yup, I definitely want some contrast. And I want less saturation again. Just a touch. Well, do I? Let's see. Yeah, I do. I want that kind of... Because we have this salmon color and the skin, I want less. And I'm... <laughs> am I going to do this or not? Yeah, I am. Uh, I like that. This too. I almost need to make a style with this little tweak. The S-curve. Um, yes, I'm going to go down there. I mean, I need practically no skin retouching. Thank you, Hannah. Is that even on? What have I done? Yeah. So I brought some more brightness into the highlights somewhere along the lines. I like the dark. Do I like a vignette? I do like a vignette. 
subtle vignette but not changing the saturation because I don't want the color to change here I want it to go gray uh, yeah I wish that was a default saturation in fact what I might do is I might you know what you can do say you don't like the presets of something like this which I don't I don't like the saturation is is cut by default you can create a uh, like I do for like I do let's take that example away what I do for brightness and uh, local contrast so I actually always have local contrast on to a style that is called zeroed that I created where it's this is at zero uh, and if you if this is at a hundred percent and if you're looking at this and saying hey this is weird what the hell is this I don't mind doesn't look like this it's because this is a developer version of Darktable so this is what your Darktable is gonna look like after the next big release so I'm just kind of poking around here and seeing what I like and what I don't like I like that like that a lot yeah I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna go with that um, and that's also poss probably gonna be one of my favorites so copy those settings paste them all so yeah this is what I go through for proofs um, and then I have I have a proof setting which chooses the resolution I want and where I want them to go relative to the path and actually should auto watermark which you can do but I haven't done yet um, I took a couple of those, but I don't seem to really need them because my styles are working out well. This is... This was back to F8, so there's a reasonable chance that the settings I set up for this... I'll be happy for this. Uh... Yeah, I think so. For proofs. Um, then we change the lighting. So yeah, that's right for all of those. Then I went with a strip box. Yeah, those look good. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, it's not straight. Just so you know, you do know, don't you, that you can right click? Because this, um, this angle thing is a bit of a pain. So hopefully you know that you can take a straight line and right click and go from there to there. And it'll, it'll treat that as horizontal. Or you can do vertical too. So that's a very useful thing. That photo's nice. Oh, <sighs> okay. So then we went to this side strip box, which is completely different setup. So I'm going to really work one of these through. Choose one that I like. Ooh, I actually like that. So I don't care about the overexposed leg. I care that it's not straight, but I'm not going to change that yet. I kind of like everything about this almost. Um, what's going on with that hair? Is it too black? Well, it's just black. It's on the dark side. Because I've got a single light source and it's right to... It's like hitting her straight on now. You're seeing that highlight. So this is one of those moody lighting situations. So what do I want to do here? Let's 
So again, this is not, to me, this is not underexposed because I have the highlight along the edge. So it's legit to call this moody rather than underexposed, my pet peeve. Hmm, what do I want to do with this? That line is superb, but I wish it was more there too. Um, so there's a couple of the, the couple. Oh, it's way down there. There's a couple of things I can try and do here. I can, let's say, let's select that by color, which is there, and pop the lightness, lightness. And yeah, that's exactly what I want. Exactly what I want. Uh huh. Dude, Boyakasha. Now this is a little bright. Is that brightening that too? It is. Uh, it's hard to clone. Like I could use, uh, I could mask this so that it's only touching that. Could I parametric mask it so that it's not affecting this? Possibly, probably. But it's a little bit beyond me, so I'm just going to bring it down a little bit so that it's not... For the, for the crop, for the, for, the, uh, for the processing I'm doing right now, which is to create proofs, is good enough. For the actual, if I choose one, or if the client chooses one as their favorites, then I'm going to take care of this uh, so that's to come but that's looking really good do I want to go cold hey, do I want to go cold on the hot cold I do want to go warm like that Whoa. do I want to go cold mm. no I like that warmth though oh check that out that's wicked awesome that's awesome what else have I got going on here did I do that I did do that it's probably part of the reason why I'm getting those edges and I can actually probably oh yeah here we go I can pop that even more here which means I can possibly not be as aggressive here. So I'm not pulling the highlights of the leg up so violently here. Yeah, that's kind of working for me. I don't know if it'll be as good on the ones that have a face. What's Vibrance do here? Somebody, tell, somebody point me to a good description of Vibrance or a good YouTube about vibrance here because for me it's like sometimes I sometimes I feel like it does nothing sometimes I feel like it's awesome and I don't know why okay so we've overexposure on the leg and I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna fix it so I'm gonna create a new instance parametric mask I'm just going to s select like that. Give it a bit of a blur. Oops. Get rid of that. Then I can drop that exposure. And it's not affecting this highlight over here. Oof, it needs to go a long way. And it's going to look like crap. So that burned edge is because, can I get rid of it with a mask? Yeah. By making the mask bigger. 
So I'm taking a stop and a half off that. Perfect. And I'm not impacting at all this highlighted edge. That looks badass. Happy. Okay, so... Hang on, which one did I do? That's a bad sign. It's that one, isn't it? That's a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, I can now that I see it closer. Um, it basically brought the differences. This has got more light. What? Can, what if I bring down the shadows? Meh. And basically, what I'm wondering is, can I bring the the non-highlighted down in an easy way. Mm. I don't like where it's going. It's going, the more I do that, the more contrasty it gets. It's gonna go with that. Okay. So if you're still with me, good for you. I know I'm waffling around here, wandering all over the place, but hopefully there's something I do once in a while that is useful. Go down to there, paste all. Oof, it's done brutal things to the face. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> yikes. That is the exposure one. Ooh, and... That. Oof, so what am I going to do here? Kind of have to tame it. Well, my purpose is to get proofs, so I gotta tame it for the face. Um, copy all those settings. What about the closer ones? The further ones? Oh, that's okay. It's these close face ones. Do I even like them? Do I like any of these, or am I just gonna... No, I don't like any of them. I'm just gonna remove those from the set. Except that one. Make my life easier. That one I actually like. So, let's fix that one for proof. Um, my problem is that, which I don't even need in this photo. That's nice. Oof. That's super nice. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't deliver it like that, but I'm okay with that as proof. Okay. A lot of that, and then some floor stuff, which was the single Godox again in the 32 inch softbox at f8. So it's basically this. Let's see. Kind of pin up -y. Definitely, I could have done with an extra exposure on the f an extra stop on the flash. 
I've got a very um, a little bit Rembrandty here so a lot of these I'll probably throw out um, where Hannah isn't working to that light um, oh, I do have a I take the vignette off If I boost the dark side a little bit, I'm getting everything boosted. So this is an example of where I did not light well. This white panel was not reflecting as much as I like. I like it on the body. I mean, if we look at the set, yeah. So I'm actually okay with it. Um, I'm okay with it as a set. This will be a discard because it's too Rembrandt-y. So anything apart from that will probably make it through. But anything where Hannah is not playing to that light, like that. Those are... those. Are, yeah, so I bet. I looked at the tether and saw, yeah, we're losing an eye here. So let's work to this light. And we started doing these. Oh, oh, those are awesome. So let's choose a favor of the. Oh yeah, that one. Wow. I've got nothing in the stack. Uh, let's paste all from the previous one. Wow, that's beautiful. I've started shooting a lot with just the Godox AD600 in the Godox softbox off here and another AD600 shooting from the ceiling just splaying down onto the backdrop for separation uh, and I'm really liking it and I'm really liking that I can just go at, from f8 2500 to f1.8 f1000 and not change the lights, high speed flash kicks in and I have completely different depth of field. So I'm liking that going darker but not that dark. I think this is actually some spill from this light. You can see the stand there. And some spill from the back, but it looks great. Um what if I saturate that? Or if I desaturate that. What if I change the color just for fun? <laughs> I kind of like that. I mean, that's how easy this stuff is to do sometimes. Take draw mask. the skin invert so you're not affecting the lips like that and there's a color there's an outfit change um, but but not gonna do it I feel like that red is too red so I'm going to pull the saturation of the outfit down just a touch uh, Total personal preference. Oh, I've already taken the saturation of the whole thing down. Yeah, again, I kind of like... I'm liking this kind of desaturated look these days. Uh, do, 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 do. What can we do here? to pop the tone on the leg just to, to effectively do some uh, dodge and burn work on the skin so 
doesn't still look real. Oof. I've made the skin kind of... I've made your skin look a lot worse. And the lighting was not flattering actually, so... I do want to get that. Yes, so I want that effect on the skin. Maybe bring down local contrast to smooth things out a bit. Uh, this is one I'm going to have to retouch for sure, just because that light is harsher than some of the other ones. So if I'm going to retouch it anyway, let's just go for it here. Yeah. Yeah, like. Um, um, uh, 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 what am I going to do with that highlight? Oh, yeah. See the difference there between that being off and that being on? So I'm just dropping the light on the dark edge here. I don't know that I need to do anything with highlights. Oh, wow. That looks amazing. Boom. Copy those settings. Did I copy the right one? Where is it gone? Well, only one way to find out. Yeah, so I've got the set on the clipboard. Oh, then things got a bit crazy. Then I climbed up a ladder. And I don't like the lighting at all. So if I use these, is that pasted? Oh. So if I do use these, it's gonna be more of the funky ones like that not that I mean that's awful so there's gonna be a bunch of throwaways here that I don't care about let me choose oh do, do, do. well it was the same lighting setup just from a different angle so it totally works ha. That's awesome. Okay, I'm probably gonna dump a fair number of these and not send them as proofs, but there's a, if, there's a, um, see that photo? There's a Vanity Fair cover somewhere that reminds me of that. And I don't remember what it is. And it came up, the same thinking came up with some of the shots from that shoot, which I love. I love this shoot too. Seriously love this shoot. Um, yeah. And then we move on to... How long have I been doing this? Uh, 54 minutes. Holy guacamole. If you're still here, um, well, hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully there's something I'm doing that is useful to you. I think this was the same settings. Same flash setup, different outfit. Uh, but it doesn't work as well with the white. So let's take one that has the, let's take that one. Let's work this up from scratch. So lighting is pretty decent. Uh, I've got a lot more background light than I like. Maybe I can just kill that with shadows. 
not touch highlights. Yeah, that's bringing the background to where I want. When it's cropped, it's going to be pretty decent. Um, did you see this panel? I use that a lot. So I have somebody working to the light, and I have a big white panel reflecting light back for the for the ratio, and I have a backlit back. Ba ba ba, and no hair light. Although I tried a hair light at one point in the shoot, and I didn't like it. Okay, what do I want to do with this? I don't want to drop the saturation like I've been doing. I want to actually pop this to funky. Uh, F8. Fix the white balance. I'm not going to color correct, am I? Or am I going to go blue? Oof. That's good. Ooh, I've never seen a green be good before. But that's kind of good, too. Uh, I'm going to drop that down a tiny bit, because I feel like the white balance is actually giving me a warmer tint on the black, so that's actually fixing it. Um, it's an easy way to fix stuff. If this was a finished one, I would deal with that, but for now, I'm okay with it. Um, dealt with exposure, sharpen a tad. This is going to blow things out, so I'm going to have to fix that. Oh yeah, there's my background coming more to where I want it to. Bring that exposure back down more to where it was on camera. Yeah. Now this was all about exaggeration shoot. Or this outfit was all about exaggeration, exaggerated poses, exaggerated stance. Okay, I'm doing things in the wrong order here because some of the stuff I did earlier is coming back to haunt me. But that seems like it was just right, right on the money exposure wise. Okay. Think, 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 think. But I want over the top. So this is, this should be clarified up the wazoo which makes skin look like crap but I think it's necessary I'm going to mean more post for this but I think it's necessary let's see how that looks across the board because that clarity local contrast clarity just pop those glasses and I'm liking it's definitely that's looking a bit warm so I like that I use that color fix let's see how far we can get here too dark let's see how far this goes uh, I was pulling out I'll probably draw I don't know I was pulling out gray and white background to see what I wanted to do here. <laughs> um, so let's have a look at those. It was a very similar lighting setup. I was just pulling down different papers behind her. But I think these are going to be discards anyway. So yeah. Oh, that one's cute though. Mm, I'm probably going to discard. Yeah, I'm going to discard. And then I went back to... Yeah, this was one of those moments. Ah, oh, don't move. That looks awesome. And it does look awesome. So, let's just kill these already. 
And then we were kind of working out what on earth we were going to do. I'm going to keep these hanging around, but they're going to disappear. I'm trying to... Like I did a I did a ceiling shot. Yeah, I like that. But clearly I don't have a setup for it. So I did this yeah <laughs> with some face with some Photoshop. I've already chosen one of those but like that. If I turn that whole thing, if I like get rid of my studio and stuff that's gonna be awesome but as if by magic I've already worked one of those so let's copy that whole stack oh actually let's see how much That edit can be used for all of these. That's underexposed, so it's going to go away. Paste everything except the crop. Uh, I'm going to lose the local contrast because. I pushed it way up in that photo because it had no skin. Why am I losing sharpness here? Mm, must be just the local contrast. Zero that out. Uh, what's going on with my contrast? Fairly normal. And got a color correction that I like. Hello. What's my white balance doing? White balance is camera, so. It's, yeah. So the white balance cooled that down, so now this color correction is too vicious. Bring it up a bit. I'm gonna call that good. I mean, I do a lot of this too. I do a lot of this, but I'm finding that my settings really do, my styles that I have really are pretty darn good. That was f1.8 by the look of it. There, yeah. So this was the end of the f8. Those are good. Oh yeah. Like this ex this was the goal was this whole exaggerated like that. That's brilliant. The whole exaggerated thing with the catch light and the glasses, exaggerated sitting positions, while still being modest, as you can see. Don't ask a model to sit on a stool and open her legs as wide as she can, because that's just tacky. Uh, yeah, those are great for proof. Now, I might there's a lot of eh, there's a little some of these there will be a lot of gimp work the ones where there's the crazy wide angle but they were fun uh, so that way the way those thumbnails were slow there um, they are a lot faster with this version of Darktable because it's using the graphics card for the computation uh, it's a bit slow right now because I'm doing a screencast. I hope I'm doing a screencast. I hope that's working. Yeah. Oh, I just wish I had a... I just wish I had a studio. Uh, 
you know what, I might put another, for something like that, I might do two rolls of white, roll one down and roll one across, or something, because, you know what, even if I'd put a white card there, I could have sorted that out, because that image is brilliant. Yeah, so then I thought, well, I can't go up, but I can go down. Um, so this is F1.8 stuff. Some of it's really not. Oh, yeah, that one. So let's see what happens with the same settings. Could be all over the place. It's a little bit color balanced out because it's F8. Let's work this one. Nice job, Haley. Not Haley. Sorry, Haley. Sorry, Hannah. Okay, that's my white balance fix. I think that's nice. Um, nice shallow depth field. It's really nice being able to use a thousandth of a second in, in the studio to do shallow depth of field because if I was shooting that 100 ISO f1.8 and f250 of a second, which is max shutter speed, I would be having ambient light totally messing with me. So if, you, if you're not a studio shooter, the important thing about studio sh shooting is spending more of your time here telling you something you probably already know. But if we go all the way up to the first photo, this is what the camera sees in that room with no flash. And that, that should be your starting point. No flash, no light absolutely zero light and then everything you're adding in everything that shows up in the photo is what you're adding in and that is 100 ISO that was even f4.5 f250 so maybe f1.8 would have would have a 250th would have not let in any light but I don't think so now I gotta go find that photo again There it is. Oh, that's a good photo. That's a bit blurred, though. But it kind of works because that's pin sharp, that eye is sharp. Th the cleavage down here looks good uh, what is that line I do not know oh it was the it's the necklace so yeah I like that what, do I, what else do I want to do with this more contrast more sharpness what am I doing with local contrast so far? Nothing. What do I want to do with this? Yeah. Yeah, I do. That is what I want to do with this. I don't really care about shadows. I actually want to bring up the shadows, which I can do in various ways. So I'm not going for contrasty because it's high key. Uh, not shadows because I've already dealt with those. What happens if I pop those highlights? So I'm starting to get an edge there, which I don't want. That's better. And then equalizing is going to pop the shine. Uh, like what's going on with my levels oof where did that come? do I care it looked good I'm 
that doesn't look as good. So am I gonna do? I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna do blown out. Blown out highlights. Bite me. Right there. Copy all. Uh, a lot of those are gonna be junked because it didn't work. Those are good. Yeah. Yeah. No, because of the focus. No, because it's just unflattering with that lens. But I was trying to. I was trying to get that same thing shooting from below, shooting from above, and yeah, it doesn't really work. So you know what? I might just Photoshop the crap out of one. Oh, that's interesting. I doubled up the lighting here, so I've got a second light. I've got a light over here, and then I've got a second beauty dish. Uh, one of those collapsible... I don't remember who it's made by. I don't see it lying around here. So I've got that soft box, and I've got that beauty dish. So I'm double lighting from both sides just to even this whole thing out. Um, okay, that was... Oh, that was F8, but no way did I do that on purpose. What does it look like? The same settings. It looks awesome. <laughs> so let's just do that. Uh, to there. Flash died. One of the flash. Oh, those look brilliant. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Flash died here. Couldn't work out what the. Heck. Couldn't work out what was going on. Why does this look weird? And then I realized the flash was dead. So let's just remove those. Now I could click one here and it goes to unstarred um, and drops them out. But what I tend to, that kind of bites me in the butt because what tends to happen is um, I go, so five stars is stuff that I've actually already delivered. So when I get to go to proofs, I might have said, gone one, two, three, kind of, um, kind of um, selected some along the way. So what I do for my proofs is something like anything less than four. And if you do that, it includes the unstarred ones, which, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So if I want something absolutely to go away, I remove it from the collection rather than just make it unstarred. So what were we doing? We were dealing with those F8 one, F1.8 photos. Then I went back to F8 because I suddenly woke up and said, why are you shooting F1.8 even though they rock? Why don't we keep this color palette though? Yeah, I like this. I tend to go in, I tend to, like I like something to be coherent. If I deliver three images from the set, I want them all to be coherent. Um, the only thing wrong with that is, uh, I'll do it differently, is that it's got the f1.8 white balance as opposed to the f8 white balance. Uh, and see those now match. Booyakasha. I've started saying that. My kid and I started saying that. So if I sound like an idiot, so be it. Uh, let's go down to there with that. How do they look? I may not like the colder look with the guitar. I love it. So again, I'm doing triple light. So I'm doing that, that, and that one is hitting the white background and blowing it out. I don't think I have a edge light going on here. You never know though. Okay, now this gets easy because I've already done one of these. 
Ah, by going too far there, I just reset where I am in the one stack, if you know what I mean. So copy all of those settings, go back to my ones, and I'm back at the beginning. If anybody uses groups, it would be super cool. If it would be super cool to be able to say, here's my thinking. If I say, okay, all that style is one group, and then go to another group, and then collapse groups so that instead of scanning through all of the images to get to where I want to go, I'm like skip group, skip group, skip group because they're closed. You know, a little bit like a file tree. Anywho, let's see now. So I've got, before I started with a lot of the smoke, I've been playing around. You can see there are some settings in here that I've already been playing around. Um, let's go from there to there with those settings, not the crop. Oh, what was exposure one? That was for the pants. Let's try it anyway. It's not going to work for any of the ones. It's going to mess with the ones that are above the waist. But probably not in a way that I care for proofs. Oh, that looks overexposed. Pop. Uh, yeah, that was me dialing in lights. So I'll probably dump those. Uh, had to play to the light again here. I went down to I was down to one light. So the images where Hannah is playing to that light, the exposure is great. When they're not, I'll probably dump them. Um, but we're all good here. Yeah, we're all good here. Oh, yeah. That's a good photo. She even looks like she knows what she's doing. Like, that looks like an a E. And by holding on to the whammy bar here, it just made her hand look really natural. Oh, these are awesome. Um, and, then, and then we got a smoke machine going. So, these are totally random. And it's going to be much harder to uh, do a global setting. Has this had anything done to it? No. So let's work on this F8 color palette. I mean, I could just leave it there almost. So, so many options here. I can expose up to getting the face right. Um, you can do that with the tone curve because it's more the shadows. <sighs> yeah. I don't think there's going to be a one size fits all for this part of the set because I was moving around and doing all kinds of stuff. Um, but this is just going to be complete and utter playground. Uh, there's so many cape possibilities here. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I might just do something very simple with these for proofs and then take it on a case by case. I'm pissed that I left that in there because it wasn't even on. So that's going to be a pain in the neck to keep going with these smoke rays. Bummer. No. A little bit. Yeah. No. That would pop the smoke, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. But I don't know if I want to. Yeah, I don't want to go there. But I don't know if I want to go there either. Let's see, somewhere in between. 
what's the equalizer going to do with the smoke? Uh, that looks so processed. But it would be interesting to do. That's better. The way it's catching these wisps. But again, I can't. Oh, there's so many ways this can go. Um, holy crap, that's good. But then again, every single photo in the set is slightly different, so I can't dial this one in and then clone the settings. Let's see. Um, let's do that with some of the early smoky ones. Yeah. Whoa, it's gonna be... So that had light. You know what? This is just so much work. Let's see if there's anything. It's going to be so hard to... Th this isn't... This is a waste of your time. Because I'm just going to have to go into these one by one now. Um, and then we did some kind of pin up -y silhouettes. It's the same thing. These are, I don't know how I'm going to proof these. I might just proof these completely differently because it's more about the pose. Every single one is different in its own right. Um, like these are cool. I'm doing a whole nother set like this on Thursday. Um, Calvin Klein underwear kind of set. Oh, these are cool. That's insane. Let's work that one just for fun. Oh, it's already got a stack. Where'd that come from? Must have been the same settings as something else. Anyway, let's see what we got with it. I kind of want to bring this down in this. Uh, if you see what I mean, I want to kind of go almost dark apart from the highlights uh, but not that much what's my tone curve going to do for me here yeah see that edge uh, the face is blown out, which is not good. What have I got here? Nothing. Nothing. Um, but it would be kind of fun. Whoa, what's all this? That's what was borking stuff. What if I... Maybe that's what I was trying to do before. What if I bring up the guitar? Nah, there's not enough there. I like that though. I mean, just the hint of the leg there. Um, And there's just a hint of the smoke here. That looks... That looks good. You know what? Maybe I can pop that. Yeah. See the difference there? I'm popping the highlights. Of 
those smooth sections of skin. Wow. Uh, I'm okay with that being blown out. Let's see what it's like not blown out. Do a parametric mask. If you want to understand parametric masks, chat, search out Harry, whatever his name is, Harry Duggan, I'm sorry, I don't remember what it is, and I go to my browser right now, but um, I'm having a weird thing where if I go out of this window and come back, then I get a greenish tint on everything, which is a little bit odd. Now I'm going to visually bring the brightness down until I know it's doing its job, but if I go too far, it's going to start looking burned. I think that's worth it. Uh, no I don't. See that burn? It's fine burned out. It's fine blown out. That's awesome. I am going to make that a three star, four star because I think I'm going to go with it as one of my favorites. But let's see what else. Let's see what else I can clone that to. Maybe that one. I'm going to be fairly vicious with purging some of these because sometimes you can give some, somebody too much choice. Um, and it's not like there's not a bunch. Yeah, again, you're just sitting me watching, talking to myself. So... Let's let's look at what we've done. I've basically gone through this whole set of 550 images, taken one out of a similar set, worked it, cloned the settings to the rest, and I've done that for each of these sets. And the further I go down, the more I'm just taking something up here, cloning it down here, making a tweak, then cloning the settings across others. And I'm ending up with now uh, 539 images, well, except for the last stuff, which is so random. But if this was a more normal shoot, you know, all of these are totally presentable with proofs and actually more processed than a lot of people deliver. You know, a lot of people just shoot and then give, shoot either RAW or JPEG and then just do a tiny tweak and then deliver all the photos. I think I'm already delivering better photos than that type of shot, that type of service. Um, and now what I'll go through and do is I'm going to go through and like take everything to two that should, that is viable. So two, 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 everything that I think Hannah might like. And as this is set to equal one, when I hit two, they disappear. So I'm going to have to go through all 500 of them and upgrade them to two if I think they might be viable. Like that is a no. That is a maybe, why not? That is a yes. So I'm going to go up to two, and I'm going to go through all of these. Then I'll be taking my ones that are left over, like these, and removing them. Um, then I'll work through, and I'll move some to three that I think are candidates for my favorites. Then I'll work them, 
move them to four, export them, move them to five, and then work with them in different tools. Uh, but these, I mean, considering this is still raw, yeah, these are too dark. <laughs> What's going on with this? Oh, those are my test ones, dialing it in. And then those are my edits, editables. So yeah, super happy with that. So I hope that helps the process. Um, please like and subscribe and please comment. I respond to every single comment. Um, ask for whatever you want. Um, let me know what you think. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook if you, uh, are in if you like the work that I do. And I'll see you on another day. Take care. Bye-bye.